Hi, I am Dr. Mashur. Welcome to my class. Today, I would like to discuss tertiary tailor of wastewater. In the last class, we discussed the secondary treatment of wastewater. In that, we discussed the anaerobic treatment of wastewater. Today, we can see tertiary treatment of wastewater. Tertiary treatment of wastewater or advanced treatment of wastewater we are doing sometimes some uh, specific constants of wastewater is cannot be removed by the secondary treatment and that constant should be removed to dispose this wastewater to the environment without causing nuisance that's why uh, we are doing the tertiary treatment of wastewater that means uh, some components of wastewater which cannot able to are uh, removed by the secondary treatment of wastewater that time we will use the tertiary treatment of wastewater and that compound should be removed from the wastewater or uh, to dispose this water into the environment without causing any nuisance in wastewater treatment the tertiary treatment of wastewater is needed under the following conditions the first one is when the quality of the effluent to be discharged does not meet the standard requirement that means the effluence coming from the secondary treatment that is does not meet the standard quality of the effluent that time we will do the tertiary treatment and secondly when we need to reuse this water that time we will uh, we'll go for the tertiary treatment of wastewater and if we need to remove the nitrogen and phosphorus from the effluent of secondary treatment or uh, effluent of secondary treatment that time we will use the tertiary treatment of wastewater and this tertiary treatment basically involves the removal of dissolved solids from this, uh, and uh, removal of suspended solids and removal of nitrogen and removal of phosphorus and removal of pathogenic organism from the secondary treatment effluent and that's effluent have to be uh, disposed into environment without causing any nuisance that's why we will use the sec uh, tertiary treatment of wastewater. Uh, there are mainly four processes that were used in the tertiary treatment of wastewater. First one is the removal of solids from the effluents, and second one, a biological removal of nitrogen, and third one, removal of biological removal of phosphorus, and fourth one is disinfection. That means removal of pathogenic microorganism from the effluent. These are the uh, four major process involved in tertiary treatment of wastewater. First one is uh, removal of solids and second one uh, biological removal of nitrogen and third one is biological removal of phosphorus and fourth one is the removal of pathogenic or disease causing organism from the wastewater that means uh, the disinfection. These are the ma uh, four major processes involved in the tertiary treatment of wastewater. First we can see the solid removal and the effluent from secondary treatment of wastewater that contain solids and this solid may be uh, dissolved or suspended and th there are different techniques were used to remove this uh, solids that is, uh, uh, that is present in the secondary treatment of wastewater. First we can see the removal of suspended solids and this uh, effluent of secondary treatment of wastewater contain uh, suspended solids with the size of 0.1 micrometer to 100 micrometer size. To remove the suspended solids we can use the granular filtration method in that we are using uh, sand uh, to remove uh, for the filtration and we can also use the micro scanning methods for this removal of suspended solids present in the wastewater and sometimes we can use the diatomaceous earth filters to remove this suspended solids present in the secondary uh, effluent of secondary treatment of wastewater these are this is the method of suspended removal of suspended solids present in the effluent of secondary treatment of wastewater and sometimes coagulation come sedimentation technique were also employed to remove the suspended solids present in the effluent of secondary treatment of wastewater. Next we can see that the removal of dissolved solids. 
to remove the dissolved solids from the waste uh, the effluent of secondary delivery wastewater we can use two uh, mainly using two methods one is uh, adsorption method and another one is uh, ion exchange method first we can see the adsorption method in adsorption method we are using activated carbon adsorption method and in that uh, this activated carbon is a highly porous material and it's provided large surface area for the uh, absorption of dissolved solids in the advanced treat treatment of wastewater that means this uh, activated carbon is a uh, highly porous material and it's provided large surface area for the uh, dissolved solids to absorb on this uh, activated carbon and using this this technique we can use, uh, remove the organic substances like herbicides pesticides tannin lignin and uh, color producing substances and odor producing substances can be removed using this activated carbon adsorption method and inorganic materials like uh, toxic trace elements and several other pollutants can also removed using this adsorption by activation activated carbon this is the granular activated carbon co uh, contractor this is the most widely used instrument for the removal of dissolved solids present in the effluent of secondary delivery of wastewater and is the working of this contractor is based on the adsorption by activated carbon and this instrument is a cylindrical in shape in having uh, a bed of uh, activated granular activated carbon the effluent from secondary element of wastewater will enter into the uh, cylinder uh, from the top of this uh, uh, instrument and this effluent will pass through this activated uh, granular activated carbon bed and the treated effluent will come through the bottom of this instrument and the dissolved solids attached adsorbed on this carbon bed that will be removed by the back washing of this instrument and that will help to remove the adsor uh, adsorbed solids present on the uh, activated uh, granular activated carbon bed and that will helps to remove the blockage of this activated uh, granular activated carbon bed and the use of the activated carbon requires regeneration that means reactivation uh, to remove this adsorbed uh, uh, solids present on this uh, activated carbon for that purpose this activate uh, this carbon activated carbon will be heated at 800 degrees celsius in a furnace to remove this dissolved solids and this uh, in the absence of oxygen at this uh, temperature uh, the attached dissolved uh, uh, the adsorbed solids will be removed as a gases and instead of this activated granular uh, carbon we can use powdered activated carbon this is about the adsorption uh, of activated carbon and the next method is the ion exchange removal of dissolved a solid person in the effluent and the ion exchange means displacement of one ion with another that is a ion exchange in the ion exchange uh, in the ion exchange process there will be insoluble ion exchange will be there and that will uh, exchange the ion with different species of ion present in the solution that means there will be insoluble ion exchange will be there that will exchange ion with ions present in the wastewater and there are two type of ion exchanger is there one is anion exchanger and another one is a cation exchanger and the synthetic resin with strong acidic and basic groups serves ion exchangers the cation exchanger with h plus and na plus can able to 
exchange ca2 plus and mg2 plus and this is done to remove the hardness of water and anionic exchangers with oh minus can remove negatively charged ions like so4 2 minus and no3 and co3 2 plus ions can able to remove by ionic exchangers the wastewater is first passed through the cation exchanger column and after that this wastewater will be passed through the anion exchanger column when the ion exchange capacity of this resin is exhausted and that resin has to be go for regeneration and for that for cation exchange resin regeneration is done with using with uh, sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid and while anion exchangers can uh, regenerate by the alkali uh, NaOH is used to regeneration for anionic exchanger. The wastewater should not be uh, should not contain high concentration of suspended solid as they block the ion exchange column. This is the one of the model of ion exchanger column. The first wastewater water is passed through the cation exchanger claw for this you can we are remove the mg2 plus and uh, ca2 plus and uh, next one you can anionic exchange column then you can remove the uh, so uh, so for two minus and cl minus and ca3 uh, ca3 two minus and for the regeneration of cations that will be used sulfuric acids and the case of this one uh, anion that will be using uh, NaOH this is about the an exchange column for the removal of dissolved solids present in the effluent of secondary treatment of wastewater next process in the tertiary treatment of wastewater that is a biological nitrogen removal decomposition product of Protein and urea in the wastewater are the major concerns of nitrogen present in the wastewater. And the excess concentration of this nitrogen is uh, cause eutrophication. That's why it's essential to remove this nitrogen from this wastewater. And the biological nitrogen fix uh, removal is carried out by two methods as a nitrogen assimilation and uh, nitrification and denitrification these are the two method uh, two method used in the biological nitrogen fixation one is assimilation of nitrogen and second one is nitrification and denitrification first we can see the assimilation of nitrogen nitrogen is a nutrient and the microorganisms will use this nutrients to grow uh, that means this microorganism bacteria will use this nitrogen to grow and some of uh, cells bacterial cells will die and a portion of ammonia nitrogen will return to the sewage next uh, the method is the nitrification nitrification is the process of conversion of ammonia nitrogen into nitrate and this is process is uh, occurred by the first ammonia nitrogen get oxidized into nitrate by the bacteria nitrosomonas and after that this nitrate will be converted into nitrate by nitrobacter species this is the process of the uh, nitrification that means the first ammonia nitrogen will be converted into nitrate by nitrosomonas and and this nitrate will be converted into nitrate by nitrobacter and the bacteria involved in the nitrification is are autotrophs, autotrophs, oxotrophs and the nitrification process is accomplished by aerobic suspended and aerobic attached go system in the general practice the, is the nitrification is carried out along with the BOD removal in the secondary treatment with the suitable modification that means the nitrification process is uh, done in the with, along with the BOD removal in the secondary treatment with a certain modification and 
treatment filters, protective biological contractors, and packet towers can be used in the nitrification process. This is about the nitrification. Okay. Nitrification is the process of conversion of ammonia nitrogen into the nitrate. Is the first the ammonia nitrogen is converted into nitrate by nitrous ammonas and the nitrate nitrate will be converted into nitrate by nitrobacter and this bacteria involved in this uh, nitrification are oxytrophs this is about the nitrification process and the nitrate synthesized in nitrification process will be removed as a nitrogen gas in denitrification process and as you can see the denitrification denitrification is the process of conversion of nitrate into nitrogen gas okay and denitrification is the process of conversion of nitrate into uh, nitrogen gas that is the denitrification and this denitrification process is uh, occurred under anaerobic condition and bacteria involved in this uh, denitrification process are aerobacter bacillus brevibacterium lactobacillus uh, micrococcus Pseudomonas and Spirillum. These are the bacteria involved in the denitrification process. These bacteria are heterotrophs and require no oxygen, but the presence of organic carbon is essential. That means this bacteria are heterotrophs and this not, does not need any oxygen, and but it needs organic carbon for its decom uh, for its conversion. And the presence of even a minute quantity of, of oxygen that will suppress the denitrification that means this, uh, we are told that, told that these organisms are anaerobic and the presence of a minute quantity of oxygen that will suppress the denitrification process and the heterophilic bacteria that can reduce nitrate in the following stage that means uh, this uh, this heterophilic, bac uh, heterophilic bacteria will convert nitrate in nitrate into nitrite and nitric oxide and nitric oxide and nitrogen gas this is the uh, stages involved in the denitrification first the nitrate and that nitrate will be converted into nitrite and nitric oxide and nitrous oxide and finally it forms a nitrogen gas these are the steps involved in the denitrification process this denitrification can be done by attached growth system or suspended growth system and the plug for type activated cell system is commonly used for this denitrification process this this process primarily consists of removal of organic carbon and the aerobic condition and followed by the nitrification after that the denitrification process will be occurred The next process is in the tertiary treatment that is the biological removal of phosphorus. The phosphorus present in the wastewater will be in the orthophosphate form or phosphate form or polyphosphate form or is in a phosphate attached form. And this phosphorus is an essential nutrient for the microorganism. Thus, it will use this phosphorus uh, present in the wastewater in the secondary treatment and that will remove uh, use around. 10 to 30 percent of phosphorus present in the wastewater during the secondary treatment of wastewater and for this growth and is for energy production and the excess amount of phosphorus present in the uh, wastewater that will leads the uh, leads the eutrophication and that's why it is essential to remove the uh, phosphorus present in the wastewater uh, before it is going to dispose into the environment. The biological removal of phosphorus is based on the principle of exposing the microorganism alternating aerobic and anaerobic condition. And in aerobic tank, this microbes will accumulate, uh, microbes will take up large quantity of phosphorus inside the cell. And after that, this micro will be exposed to anaerobic condition. That time, this micro will release the phosphorus 
is accumulated inside the cell and and this cycle be continue to remove this large amount of phosphorus present in the wastewater and the acinabacter species are the are the main uh, species of bacteria that is involved in the removal of phosphorus from the wastewater and the bacteria released phosphorus will be removed in the next stage now we can see the process of phosphorus removal the four strips or phosphate stripper process system used for this purpose and the anaerobic phosphate stripper removes the phosphate and resultant sludge is returned to aeration tank which take large quantity of phosphorus the phosphorus enriched so when that come out the phosphorus strippers is treated with the lime to precipitate the phosphorus and the resultant liquid superint can be retained the aeration tank for further treatment this is the process of uh, phosphorus removal that means the phosphorus strip process or phosph uh, phosphate stripper process system is used for the purpose of phosphate removal and the anaerobic phosphate stripper remove the phosphate and the resultant sludge is returned back to the aeration tank to take large quantities of phosphate for large quantities of phosphorus the phosphorus enriched super that superadden that's come from the phos uh, phos strips that will be treated with the lime and this lime will be precipitate this phosphorus and this precipitated phosphorus can be removed the next process in the tertiary treatment that is a disinfection disinfection means the removal of pathogenic organism or disease causing organism from a object uh, is called as a disinfection in the wastewater or in the water the wastewater there will be so many uh, pathogenic or disease causing organism will be may be present like bacteria fungi bac uh, bacteria protozoa may be present that will cause diseases and removal of this pathogenic organism from this wastewater is uh, done by the disinfection and for this disinfection we are using so many uh, number of method we are using we are, we, a number of agent we can use that is a mechanical uh, method or mechanical agent we can use we can use physical agents we can use chemical agents and the physical agents we can use as a heat and light we can effectively use for the removal of pathogenic organism and uh, sunlight particularly ultraviolet we can use for this uh, removal of pathogenic organism and some radiations like gamma rays we can use uh, for the removal of pathogenic organism and the mechanical means we can Involves screeners and coarse or fine screeners and sedimentation and others we can use for the uh, removal of pathogenic organism and filter filters can also use for the removal of pathogenic organism for for the disinfection of wastewater. We can also use the chemical agents for the disinfection. Chlorine and its compound is uh, most widely used disinfectant and this chlorine is considered as the most universal disinfectant and apart from this chlorine we can use bromine, iodine, ozone, alcohol, phenol, heavy metals, hydrogen peroxides, alkalis and acids also sometimes employed and the most commonly used chlorine compound are uh, chlorine, uh, uh, commercial chlorine gas, calcium hypochlorite and sodium hypochlorite and chlorine dioxide these are the most commonly used commonly used calcium uh, sorry chlorine compound for the disinfection and chlorine is considered as an ideal disinfectant and which is toxic to pathogen at low concentration and is soluble and stable in water and is non toxic to a man and higher organism and they are cheap and easily available that's why this chlorine is considered as an ideal disinfectant 
this is the disinfectant method uh, process used in the tertiary treatment And this is about the tertiary treatment of wastewater. I hope you understood this class. Thank you. Thank you for listening.